So how did I develop frequency-specific microcurrent? It was an accident. I went to chiropractic college when I was 42, started pre-med when I was 40, um, started practice in 1994, and in 1995, I got a list of frequencies from an osteopath who bought a practice in 1946 that came with a machine that was built in 1922. And that machine came with a list of frequencies. Um, I got the list from uh, George Douglas, who worked with this osteopath. And I got the list a little bit at a time. So I started in practice and I was working on somebody's leg with my thumbs and her pain went from like a three up to a six or a seven. And I called George on the phone and I said, what, what do I do? And he said, well, you have a microcurrent machine there. Put 18 hertz on channel A and 62 hertz on channel B and run that and see what happens. I said, what are those for? He said, I'll tell you if they work. And Five minutes later, she was completely out of pain. I called him back and I said, what are those frequencies for? He said, well, they're to stop bleeding. 18 hertz is the frequency to stop bleeding and 62 hertz is the frequency for the arteries. I said, what frequencies? What, how, where did they come from? He said, well, I got this list from Harry Van Gelder. Harry Van Gelder was the osteopath that George worked with in the 1980s and George brought the list back written on pieces of binder paper. And when I started practice in 1994, um, he bought me a two-channel precision microcurrent machine. Big, We called it the blue box. It was a big analog machine. And we put the, I put 18 hertz on channel A and 62 hertz on channel B and ran it, and this patient's pain went down. I said, well, that's interesting. So... Over time, through 94 and 95, we started using this list of frequencies together on patients. And we found out that it did more or less exactly what it was alleged to do. So if the frequency said it was for allergy reaction, it would take down redness and itching. And if it was for inflammation, it would take down pain and swelling. In 1996, I started using the frequencies on myofascial pain. Um, 97, um, I decided I had to teach it to find out if it was reproducible because we were doing things with chronic pain patients. Myofascial pain is muscle pain and muscle knots and it is, they're very difficult to treat. And by the end of 96, I had 50, 60 patients that were between seven and 20 years chronic pain and they all got better. I was like, okay, is this real? Is this because the frequencies actually work or because I've got magic hands and the walls in the clinic are pink? What's up with this? So if you can teach it, if somebody else can reproduce it, then it's reproducible. It's probably real. So I taught it for the first time in January of 1997. And by June, we knew it was reproducible. There were about 10 people that bought devices from the distributor locally and by June, we were getting word back that, yes, indeed, this worked, which was pretty remarkable since I was so terrible at teaching it back then. It was kind of awful. So 97, I taught it four times. We had um, continued to treat myofascial pain patients in the clinic. 98, I published the first paper on treating myofascial trigger points. 98, I figured out how to treat <clears throat> nerve pain. There's a frequency to reduce inflammation and a frequency for the tissue, the nerves, the way the system works. It's what's wrong with the tissue. Is it inflamed? And what tissue is it? So nerve pain is because a nerve, 396 hertz, is inflamed, 40 hertz. So we figured that out in 1998. 1999 figured out how to treat full body pain from fibromyalgia, um, and that is the frequency for reducing inflammation in the spinal cord. So in 99, 
I had 25 cases. I went to work at a medical pain management clinic, had 25 cases in 1999, and got invited to do a ground rounds um, presentation at the National Institutes of Health by one of um, my colleagues in the myofascial pain world. And um, I presented those 25 cases at this lecture. There are about 40, you know, guys in white coats and pocket protectors and glasses and crossed arms. And, and I said, okay, I've done this 25 times. These patients come in with their pain at an average of a seven on opiates that don't work. So their pain level is a seven. They leave it a zero. I've done it 25 times. There's nobody it doesn't work on and nobody is going to believe it unless we have something objective. And I have no idea what we can measure in these patients, but you guys are the best scientists in the world, so somebody tell me what we can measure. Terry Phillips came up and he said, you send me a spot of blood on blotter paper and I will tell you what they had for breakfast. So we'll, we'll be able to figure out what, what's changing. So he sent me the blotter paper. I called a patient that I had not been able to help. We treated her for nerve, we treated her for muscle, nothing worked. <clears throat> and called her, said, I'm gonna to have to poke your finger a couple of times and let's try this new thing. And she said, okay. So we did the blood sample data and um, then I had a speaking engagement um, about six or seven weeks later where I was supposed to present this case report, these case reports, all 25 patients and talk about how it was that there was only one frequency combination that worked on these patients, 40 hertz on channel A, 10 hertz on channel B. And the data from Terry Phillips from NIH came through on the fax machine literally as I was headed out the door. So I picked up the piece of paper, threw it in my purse, climbed on the plane, got off in Phoenix, um, looked at the data, and there are these numbers interleukin-1, interleukin-6, CGRP, TNF-alpha. I'm a chiropractor. I had no idea what interleukin-168, TNF-alpha, and CGRP were. Um, but the numbers look pretty good. They went from 392 down to 21, so that they went in the right direction. They clearly changed over a small period of time. So, but there was no Google. This was 2000. There, there was no Wikipedia. There was no place to look it up. So I walked in, headed into the hotel, and Jeff Bland, who started the Institute for Functional Medicine, is walking out. And I said, Jeff, I have this data. Now, it's his conference that I am lecturing at and presenting it. I just got this data this morning from Terry Phillips. What do you think? And I handed him the list, and my first clue about what we had was his hands started shaking. And he said, the endorphins go up by a factor of 10 times. A runner would have to run miles to get that kind of change in endorphins. I said, yeah, they get pretty stoned. I said, yeah, but I don't know what the rest of it means. Is this a big deal? And he said, you know, he looked at his watch. He said, Michael Ruff is in, still in his office at GW in Washington, D.C. He works in Candace Pert's office. The two of them wrote the foundation literature on cytokines and they wrote the uh, molecules molecules of emotion and he said call Michael he'll tell you so I called Dr. Ruff I said Dr. Bland said call you I've got these numbers I don't know what they mean and he said I said would you mind helping me out and he said no no that's that's fine what are the numbers I said well interleukin 1 goes from 392 down to 21 and it was like the line went dead for a second and he said really quietly what time frame? I said, 90 minutes. He said, that's not possible. Cytokines are hard to change, and when they change, they change really slowly. It's like, no, they all change like that. And I just read off the data. Um, interleukin-6, interleukin-8, TNF-alpha, CGRP, they all dropped at logarithmic rates by factors of 10 and 20 times. Substance P, which is made in the spinal cord when there is pain, went down at a 45 degree angle from, and then endorphins go up. So he said, I have no, he said, well, actually what he said was, who did your data? I said, well, Terry Phillips, the same guy that does your data. And he said, well, he's the best in the world. So there's no question that the data is accurate. I have no idea what you're doing, but keep doing it. 
So he ended up touching base with me every now and then to to follow up because I had ended up with data on 13 patients, and they're all like this. The fact that one frequency combination can change not only pain, but objective chemicals in the blood that create or mediate inflammation and pain is unheard of. It is still unequaled any place in medicine. So that was 2000. We did another 25 cases in 2000, and at this point, with fibromyalgia associated with spine trauma. It's just that one kind. There are probably five or six different ways that people get fibromyalgia. But there were another 25, and then the next year there was another 30. So all told, I probably have close to 400 of these um, in the last 18 years. Um, And meanwhile, I kept teaching it. So... 90 to 2000, we figured out how to treat diabetic neuropathies. The first year, 98, 99, when I was treating nerve pain, I didn't get any place with diabetic neuropathies uh, because I was treating the nerve. In point of fact, I finally looked it up, and diabetic neuropathies aren't because of the nerve. They're because the blood vessels get so inflamed and gummy and congested that the nerve doesn't get enough circulation and the nerve kind of dies, which is why it hurts. So when we started treating the blood vessels, diabetic neuropathies got better. 99, 2000, 2002, and three, the practice just kept growing. I was seeing 90 patients a week. Um, Asthma, patient came in with asthma and she was on her way to the emergency room And she stopped in. We figured out that if I adjusted her spine, sometime her asthma went away. And she wouldn't have to go to the emergency room. This day, I adjusted her spine and it didn't work. And she said, well, I guess I'll go to the ER. I said, no, wait, give me a second, would you? Just give me a second. So I put the the conducting medium for this microcurrent is these graphite gloves. And they're conductive. They're graphite impregnated vinyl. They look like this. They're not very fancy. The machine plugs into them, and you wet them and put them on the patient's back and then put them under her chest. And I was a pharmaceutical salesman for 16 years. So the mechanism for asthma is the bronchi spasm, and they get inflamed, and they have a reaction to histamine, which is why they spasm. So with asthma, the pathologies for the bronchi, which is the tissue, is inflammation, allergy reaction, and spasm. So I ran those frequencies on this lady, and the asthma just went away. Like 15 minutes, it was gone. Any time her asthma came back, that would always work. Except for one day when her neighbor had sprayed his roses with pesticides. And she came in, we did allergy reaction and inflammation and it didn't quite get it didn't quite take it away and she said well he sprayed pesticides and I hate it when he uses that stuff it's like oh okay there are frequencies for toxins so we ran the frequencies for toxicity and the asthma went away so the frequencies are not only specific they do exactly what they are alleged to do but they do only what they're alleged to do. So um, asthma was like that. Um, ovarian cysts, you start out with a, an ovary that's really tender and you can feel it in the abdomen when you palpate the abdomen. Chiropractors in the state of Oregon are licensed to deliver babies, do minor surgery, do all sorts of things. So we were taught GYN exams, how to do female health, women's health exams. And so I knew how to palpate an ovary, and somebody would be really uncomfortable. It's really tender. Um, They think they have low back pain, but what they have is an ovarian cyst the size of an orange. So you palpate the ovary, and it's the size of an orange. And what's an ovarian cyst? Well, the ovary is inflamed. It couldn't spit out the eggs, so the ovary makes a cyst that's full of the fluid that should have gone shooting out with the egg. Okay, so what's the problem? Why is it sore? It's inflamed. I have a frequency for that. So you run inflammation in the ovary, and the cyst shrinks, 
becomes completely pain-free and just physically disappears. The ovary becomes normal size. So over the years, um, it, you, I have this list. And once you know something about the pathologies, you just put it together, right? There's a frequency for removing the fact of trauma. Well, when somebody has a brain injury, there are frequencies for different parts of the brain, the forebrain, the midbrain, the hindbrain, the, the medulla. Okay, so what happens when you have a brain injury? You remove the fact of trauma, you remove inflammation, you remove chronic inflammation, and patients kept getting better. So I kept teaching it four times a year in Portland, and then I went to Florida and taught it in Florida. I went to Chicago and taught it in Chicago. When Ever anybody would invite me, I'd get on a plane and I'd go. Um, the class was still not great, it was two days. Um, and then in 2003, Metagenics approached me, and it's a nutritional company, and they wanted to sponsor the seminar and take it national. So in 2003, I did 12 seminars in the US, all over, and their sales reps promoted the FSM seminar and um, the seminar includes information about how to get these treatments to hold. So um, when I treat, when you treat liver disease, the liver's inflamed, right? So the liver inflammation is 40 hertz on channel A and 35 hertz on channel B, and you can treat the liver. But in order to get it to stay better, I can take the pain down. I can take the swelling down, that's easy. But to get it to stay, you need some sort of nutritional support, some environment that keeps it lasting. So that's how the collaboration with Metagenics worked. And we were I was with them for three years or so. And then um, they moved on to other things and we went on to promote the FSM seminars as a frequency-specific seminars company, corporation. Um, and it's progressed since there. I did seminars in Ireland in 2005. Started doing seminars in Australia in 2001 um, because Mike Curley heard my lecture in 2000 about fibromyalgia and he decided that his, his customers, he was a Metagenics um, president in Australia, his customers should know about FSM. So I did one seminar a year in Australia every September for seven years. Last year we did, it was 2007, and I went every June. So I had two trips a year to Australia. I've um, done one class, um, probably did three classes in Ireland, and the National Training Center in Ireland maintains that as part of their curriculum. They do one seminar a year. I've taught classes in uh, Canada, Germany. This year I get to go to Taiwan. And what has happened is the frequencies are not only reproducible. If I do it, or you do it, or your brother does it, does it, or if nobody's there and the machine is just being used by a patient, as long as they're treating the right thing with the right thing, the frequencies always do exactly what they're alleged to do. Um, and so I keep teaching because people are doing things now with FSM that I would never have thought possible 20 years ago. We've been doing this for 22 years now, been teaching it for 20. And there are people treating things that are just unimaginable. Pancreatitis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, brain injuries, spasticity from cerebral palsy, People at Cleveland Clinic and Walter Reed are treating PTSD <clears throat> and um, pain complaints, post-operative complaints. Um, the f current by itself increases energy production in the cells. The frequencies do specific things to specific tissues. So in 2003, I started treating athletes, and 2004... December 20th, I got a phone call from Terrell Owens' trainer. He is a wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. And on Sunday, the 19th, he broke his ankle, basically. He tore the ligaments in his ankle. He tore the ligaments that hold the 
tibia and the fibula together, um, and he fractured his fibula. And this was six weeks before the Super Bowl. And they called me Monday and said, Terrell wants to play in the Super Bowl in six weeks. And his chiropractor in Atlanta uses FSM, but he says, you're going to have to do it. And I said, we can probably get that done in six weeks. So I flew to Philadelphia that night, treated him as soon as he got out of the operating room the next morning and treated him for 24 hours straight. And then about six to seven hours a day for three days. And then somebody was treating him uh, five days a week. Um, and the fracture was completely healed in four weeks. And his surgeon was running around telling anybody with a microphone that um, it was an 18 week injury and he'd never played the Super Bowl and he was being foolish and blah, blah, blah. Well, the ankle was completely stable and the fracture was healed in four weeks. And Jacksonville, when we went there for the Super Bowl on Tuesday, he couldn't run. He had scar tissue in his lower leg and it wasn't looking good. <clears throat> I got there on Wednesday and we ran the frequencies. We, me and his massage therapist from Atlanta, I used the frequencies. The massage therapist went in with his fierce thumbs and took apart Terrell's lower leg, got rid of six weeks worth of scar tissue. And that massage therapist, Brian Glotzbach, Brian says to this day, that was like bloodless surgery. We just dissolved the scar tissue. The frequencies dissolve scar tissue. Um, in burn patients, in chronic injuries and chronic pain. Anyway, so that was probably my most high stakes thing. So that's how I developed FSM, was one patient at a time. The frequencies can't hurt anybody. As long as you don't drop the box on your foot, you're not going to hurt anybody with it. So you have a frequency that says removing scar tissue. And then your brain has to say, well, what is scarred together? So take scar tissue out of what? The spinal cord, the dura, the nerve, the connective tissue, the fascia. What's glued? And that's how it's developed over time. We still are using frequencies that in 20 years I've never used before. I've never used that combination before. Patient came in with a history of foreign travel and six weeks later she was in the emergency room with just acute and severe abdominal pain and um, symptoms that said that her gallbladder was seriously clogged up. The only thing that made sense was that she had parasites in the bile duct that led to the gallbladder. So I ran that frequency and her abdominal pain went away and everything went soft. That's the other thing. When the frequencies are correct, the tissues get completely smushy. So like smushy, like just soft. It just, just, it's hard to describe until you get your hands on it. Anyway, so I'd never used in 22 years of doing this, I'd never used that particular frequency combination before. But it's just a matter of what tissue is it and what's wrong with it. So this is 2018 and we continue, we, the FSM community, there's 2,500 practitioners around the world done courses in Germany. This year I'm going to Taiwan and Spain and London and back to Germany. So there are practitioners all over the world and they're doing things with FSM that 20 years ago I would not have thought possible. So that's how FSM developed. Uh, for a shorter version of the story, or maybe, maybe longer, um, I recommend you read The Resonance Effect. North Atlantic Books published that um, last year in 2017. And it tells the whole story with the details, and there are a lot of frequencies in there and protocols in there that talk about what sorts of things FSM can do. And there are a lot of patient stories. Chapter 10 is all patients and practitioners telling their experience, so you don't have to just believe me. Um, if you're curious about frequency-specific microcurrent, I recommend that you go to www.frequencyspecific.com and look us up by the resonance effect um, and enjoy what the frequencies can do for you and your family to restore health and relieve pain.